Sony has such a huge ecosystem of E-mount cameras and lenses now, but one part of their lineup people have been asking for are f1.2 primes. Well, today we are taking a look at Sony's new 50mm f1.2 G Master Prime lens. We only had 24 hours with the lens, so we shot as much as we could in that time. This included a range of stills and video, and some tests. I really like the image quality that this lens can produce. We shot the stills on an A7R Mark IV and the video on an A7S III. We shot mainly at f1.2 for both the stills and video. There's so much resolution in these images to play with, even when the depth of field is as narrow as it is on a 50mm 1.2 wide open. I really like the way the focus rolls off. The bokeh looks really nice. Let us know what you think of the image quality down in the comments below though. At £2,100, the 50mm G Master is priced more towards the pro end of the market, but that isn't surprising given it's G Master standard. Talking about G Master, this 50mm really rounds Sony's G Master lineup up nicely now. Not only have you got the Holy Trinity set of zooms available from Sony, but the 50mm now means you have six primes between 24 and 135mm. So if you are looking to invest into a fantastic set of E-mount primes for your system, this set is finally now fleshed out. The 50mm f1.2 is actually pretty compact given its f1.2 maximum aperture. It's almost the same size as the Sony 50mm f1.4 Zeiss, though it is a tad wider. It weighs 778 grams, which is decently light for a 50mm f1.2, especially considering the lens houses 14 elements in 10 groups. These specs make it an incredibly light and compact modern f1.2 lens. The lens feels incredibly sturdy, and though it's not fully weatherproof, it is dust and moisture resistant. It has Sony's nano coating to help reduce ghosting. It has a close focus of 0.4 meters, which is pretty standard for a 50 mm prime. You can also control the 11 bladed iris via the aperture ring at the back of the lens, which you can turn to auto by turning it all the way to A on the iris ring. Having this is really nice, especially for video, as you can switch between declicked and clicked with this switch. This then gives the aperture ring a really nice smooth movement for when you want to pull aperture while filming. The only thing I don't like is that the aperture is controlled electronically, so there is a delay when you turn the iris ring to when the actual iris is changing, but at least it's linear. It features the same focus by wire system as previous E-mount lenses, and this means autofocus is incredibly quick. However, it is also linked to one thing I do not like, but this isn't an issue with the lens, it's an issue with Sony's cameras currently. You have no way of adjusting how the focus by wire system responds to movement of the focus ring. It would be great to change between linear and non-linear as well as define the focus rotation. Sony, this is an easy firmware fix and something all the E-mount cameras in your lineup need ASAP. However, with how great autofocus is now on these modern Sony cameras, I can see most people sticking with that. We put the 50mm 1.2 on our demo A7S III unit and tested it using two focus settings. Both of these used eye and face priority mode, but with different transition speed and subject shift sensitivity. The first being a middle ground setup, and then the second being a fast setup, which will stay locked onto Sam here. The lens performs just as well as you expect, even though we shot these at 1.2. We really are at a fantastic point for autofocus performance in these cameras. You really can trust it now. There are a few different 50mm lenses that are popular with E-mount users, so we decided to do a comparison between a selection that we had to hand. So we grabbed a Sony Zeiss 1.4, a Sigma 50mm 1.4R, which we adapted using a Metabone Cine adapter, and lastly, the classic 50mm 1.2L Prime from Canon, and then put them all to the test. Now, of course, bokeh, like lots of other factors of a lens, is completely subjective, but none of these lenses produce nasty looking bokeh. Let's start off looking at the Sony 1.2, Wide open the bokeh is very clean without any hard edge or texture to it. You can see that the lens also suffers from cat's eye bokeh across its frame with it performing worse towards the corners of frame. But this isn't uncommon with fast full frame primes. This is better controlled as you stop down with it being very controlled from around f2.8 onwards. I think it looks best around f2 and past that you can start to see the blades forming the shape but it is still very round all the way down to f5.6. 
Overall, the Sony 1.2's bokeh is very clean and pleasant to look at. When compared to the other lenses, it has the cleanest bokeh out of the bunch. Both the Sony 1.4 and Canon 1.2 suffer from CA as well as defined edges to their bokeh. The Sigma has a touch of CA, but not as much as the other two. Let us know what bokeh you like the best down in the comments below. From the test that we did in our studio using an Aperture LS60X on basically full power blasting down the lens, the 51.2 handles flaring incredibly well, but some may think it is a little too well controlled, but this will be personal preference. 50mm lenses are one of the easier focal lengths for engineers to design, so unsurprisingly distortion is handled well across all the lenses. However, you can see a small change between them. The Canon has the most obvious difference with slight barrel distortion, but performance is quite similar across the rest of the lenses. Have you ever noticed when you pull focus, your field of view changes slightly? That's focus breathing, and is essentially your lens changing focal length as you move your focus distance. This is something that stills lenses commonly have, as it's not something engineers worry about when designing them, as they're primarily designed for stills, not for video acquisition. When filming, this effect could be desirable or not, but let's take a look at how our lenses perform here too. The Sony 50mm f1.2 suffers from some pretty heavy breathing, but this is pretty common for a stills lens. When compared to the rest of the lenses, the Sony 1.4 is similar in performance, the Canon is better controlled, and then the Sigma has the least amount of breathing. Though we can't put this new lens on our normal coverage checker, I did still want to see how the lens handles light coverage across its rated image circle. These stills are capturing the full A7R Mark IV sensor. We took these throughout the aperture range at both close focus and infinity. Wide open at both close focus and infinity, you can see some light loss towards the corners of frame. This is better handled as you reach f2, and then from here it is almost gone with only a touch of light loss. This is pretty standard for a full frame 50mm prime. If you want to see how some other lenses handle this, check out our camera and lens coverage tool via the link in the description below. When it comes to resolution, wide open the Sony 1.2 does a great job in the center, but you can see some CA still. Towards the corners, resolution is still great, but you can see more CA. Compared to the other lenses in the center, the Sigma and Sony 1.2 do a very good job, with the 1.4 from Sony and Canon featuring much more CA and not resolving as well. However, in the corners, the Sony 1.2 wide open absolutely destroys the other lenses with much better resolution and less CA. As you stop down, this is still the case until you hit around f4, which is where things get a bit more even. However, the Canon really shows its age here with it suffering from heavy CA all the way down to f8. The Sony f1.2 is hands down the best here with the Sigma hot on its heels. In conclusion, the Sony 50mm 1.2 is a great addition to Sony's massive E-mount lineup. It performs as you expect from a lens of its price point, and compared to other 50mm primes in the market, it really holds its own. However, if the price difference between the 50mm 1.2 and some of the other options is worth it, we're down to which image you prefer and if you want something native to the Sony E-mount. But if you do pick up a copy, you will not be disappointed. Let us know what you think of the Sony 50mm f1.2 G Master in the comments below. And to stay up to date with our awesome upcoming content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And thanks so much for watching.